Dave here with Half Dozen Customs. Uh, today we're working on another little project in the shop. Um, recently I just put Scully up here on the, on the handle um, and I would like to get a, a table for this. Uh, you can buy tables at 50s from Eastwood. Uh, they're about 160 bucks. But I'm fully capable of making one and I had stuff here to do it, so um, we're going to make one. Uh, I already started by cutting out a couple of plates. We're going to drill some holes in here um, on the drill press and we're going to get them tapped out uh, so that we can bolt them to the side of the bead roller uh, to build up for our, our bracing for the table. So um, that's where I'm starting first. I'm building the bracing. We have some some good stock metal here to to build a good strong brace for it so so here we go that's the first thing I'm doing Ta da <laughs> Okay, so we got the holes drilled in there. Um, one side I'm gonna have to drill a little bit bigger hole for the shank of the bolt to go through. The other side I'm gonna have to tap. So we'll uh, we'll drill some bigger holes in here real quick. Let me change up a bit. Pulls off, we'll, we'll get a tap ran through this one. Just air tool oil. All 
I see it. We're getting closer. three quarters of the way through it. So, I got the one side tapped, um, took two taps, this stuff's just thick and it must be hardened steel or something, uh, so I'm just going to have to through bolt the other one, or maybe even possibly once we get it all put together I can just tack that nut in place, but uh, we got one done that's half a victory I guess. Loser! We should be able to take the other one now that it's cooled off. Sorry, am I making the walking circles? Um, and we can mark our holes uh, where uh, I think this is going to end up at here. On, so I'm thinking that we're going to go through uh, maybe right about there. Uh, we'll drill two holes in our in our guy, and then those two plates I was just working on, I'll get bolted here sandwiching this in between the two and then I'll come up and out and we'll build a brace out for the table so By the time I get through this I probably could have just took the thing apart and put it on the Well, I was looking to see how level this thing was and Not very well. Boy. 
part, it's the cement, not the machine. A couple of, a couple of bolts with a couple of legs holding it. There's eight holes to bolt it down to the floor, so, man. All that just so I can take the table on and off. Trying to blame me? Hey, you're the one that marked the holes. My holes were already drilled. exactly how I wanted it, um, but that's my fault. I should have, um, what I, what I should have done is I should have drilled one hole and then I should have bolted uh, this plate to that hole and then marked the second hole um, instead of just trying to eyeball it off of a marker. But. But it's up there. guys I welded that up not the prettiest weld but it's welded
Good. Level? What's that? You wedged it level? <laughs> I was trying to get it level. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I was trying to, yeah. That's pretty level. It's too high. You just moved the whole thing. I bet you he's not level now. Close, it just needs to come down a little bit. That's why it's just kind of tacked in place. <laughs> I need to tighten up. It's just like a little bit. I should be kind of noise with that. No? Uh huh? Break time. good enough for me. It's time to just take it apart, finish welding it up, and then we can build uh, the table for it. So, looks good to me. Good weld, hopefully nothing moved. those cool off for a few minutes and uh, we'll be back to um, reinstall them back on the on the bead roller um, and then we're gonna then we're gonna start making the table uh, so this is what uh, this is basically what the table's gonna look like. This hole will be cut out a little bit deeper in here so that you can remove the dies without hitting the table. 
Um, and then the table is going to come out. I, I didn't have enough construction board paper. The table is going to come out another nine inches. So when I trace this onto the metal, I'll just add another nine inches to it. Um, it's a 19 inch throat bead roller. So from this, from the die this way, you have 19 inches. So I'm gonna do from the die this way, uh, 19 inches as well. Uh, and then that way you'll have, will it be 30, 38 inch, 38 inch total uh, table? So, um, and the, the whole reason that I'm doing this is because um, the other day I had, I had did some, some bead rolling on it. Um, and you know, when you're doing the bead rolling, you, you gotta, you gotta keep everything level. Um, you know, if you got the metal hanging down off the end of the bead roller, well, it's kind of putting your bead in there on an angle. Um, and you know, before you know it, by the time you're done, um, you know, your panel is not perfectly straight. Uh, it may look good, but it may be off a little bit. Um, and, and I, I tried to correct it and keep holding the panel, um, level. Um, but you know, I, I was focused on following that line and, and not paying attention to the angle of the metal. And I kept catching myself, um, letting the metal droop on the one end. So I had to keep correcting myself and picking it back up. And, and, you know, I'd bead roll some more of the line and before I knew it, I was hanging down again. Um, and, and for them to, you know, for them to come out nice and straight and level, you need to keep that metal level. Um, and I have I have a large piece coming up that I need to bead roll. Um, it's going to be a big piece, uh, and I'd really like to try and keep it level. So, it's a whole reason that I'm building the table. Um, you know, some people like using the table, some people don't. Um, you know, some people just, you know, they've been doing it so long they don't need the table. It's just natural for them to just hold the metal level. So. Um, me, you know, I'm not, I haven't been bead rolling very long, so any little bit of help that I can get at, at making sure that these come out nice and nice and perfect, um, I'm going to do it. So, so once these cool off, we'll put them back on and I'll see you to make the tabletop. Okay. Um. We're back here, I got the table all marked out on here. Um, I left roughly uh, 5 eighths of an inch border around everything uh, so that we can bend it down um, for extra strength. Um, with the bend in there, we'll probably end up with a, about a half inch um, of a lip that gets bent down and over for strength. So um, here we go, I'm gonna start with cutting out the square first. Uh, I had the first square marked out for, for where the die sit, um, and then I gave an extra inch and a quarter to be able to pull the die out and change the die, so... Okay, uh, I just showed four holes in each corner so that we have a nice rounded corner instead of a, a sharp straight corner. Uh, more for looks than anything. Don't hit the end. I know, I gotta watch you gotta take that. off your glasses to so hit your I can butter. Hear, yeah, I take off my glasses so I can hear. Yeah. Okay, so we got that center <laughs> hole cut out. Um, I'll cut around this way, cut around that way, and then we'll come back from this side and cut it out. And hopefully I can cut straight lines. This side we're good. Okay, so 
I have uh, I have air shears or some people call them nibblers um, that you could use to cut these um, but if you get off just a little bit it, it's so hard to correct yourself and those things I mean they're fast um, and it's hard to do a straight line with them and be perfectly straight. With this, I can feel, I, I feel I have way more control over it. And as long as you're following your magic marker and your magic marker's straight, then your line should be straight. So we'll just cut this corner off because I hate sharp corners sticking out. So these are the nibblers. Um, and they work awesome. I love them, but it's real easy to get off centered and and not get a straight line out of it so see I tried to keep that straight and it's close but it's not straight. cool curly cues that are sharp they are sharp the edge of that metal from from that that shear they're razor sharp Yes, that does need to be cut, but I think we'll do that before I do the break. We're, I'm gonna put some bead rolls in this. <laughs> You're gonna bead roll the bead roll? I'm gonna bead roll the bead roll table. Cleaning off all the burrs. <laughs> all right, let's do a little test fit again. Oh yeah, because this isn't centered with the, the no, die. No, your center is here. Yeah. Alright. Um, so, I think that looks pretty good. Let's just... Um, Try taking a die off. Huh? Try taking a die off. Well, it would be the lower one that... Okay, we got enough room to get the dies out. Good. I think, um, <clears throat> let me just kind of make sure everything's kind of straight and centered. And 
then I'll mark my things underneath. Just kind of <laughs> looks good for me. So we know not to put beads there. You want to mark how far they come out, or you're good? What's that? You didn't do the end line. I can't hear you. You didn't do the end line, so you know how far they come out, right? Okay, so I just kind of winged it. Um, I used I used like the width of the roller off of the edge to find this one. I found the I used the, the width of the roller off of where the brace is to find this line. These two I just eyeballed them, um, and this is where I'm going to run the beads. Uh, these little cross hatch lines here are where the bead will end in each one so so yeah there will be two beads here and then there will be two beads here on each side one going a little longer at the top there but coming longer on the bottom down here oh this one's got to stop there yeah, I missed the mark. Good thing I'm going through talking about it. Okay, so, um, now we gotta, uh, I gotta run these lines through our English wheel to pre-stretch it um, before we run it through the bead roller. Um, at least when we're running it through the bead roller, we have somewhat of a table to keep our table straight, our bead roller table straight. <laughs> I'm bead rolling my bead roll table. I know, I have problems. So, um, my dimple is going down, so we want our stretch going up. Um, your convex curve here, or compound curve here, will always put, your lower die always puts your, your stretch upwards. So, um, this is a compound curve here. Uh, compound curve uh, means that it curves this way and this way. So you're curving this way and this way, that's compound curve. So um, the more of a compound curve you have on here, um, the, the more of a stretch it's gonna put in there. So um, the more you run the metal through, the more stretch it's gonna put in there. Now we're gonna put some little beads in here, so I don't think I have to go uh, super crazy on it, but 
you know, we do need to stretch it some, just to try and keep this straight. Uh, I need my stool. You want to tell them what you figured out? So, I forgot, um, and I, I do that often, I forget. Um, we have to trace all those lines out that I just put um, on the uh, on the back side too. So. Why? Uh, so when, so the marks that I just put out there are, are perfect for the English wheel. I can follow them with the English wheel. But when we go to bead roll it, we have to flip the panel upside down so that the beads go in the right direction and we gotta have marks on it. I mean, I guess I could just put the beads on upside down. The beads have to be going so you have a smooth top surface. So your top is straight and your beads are going down. Correct. I, I know I know why I mark it on the other side, but if I just put the, the, the dies on upside down from what I normally do, then I don't have to mark off this side. Mm, you think so? Yeah. Mm. Have you done that yet? No. Oh. Yeah, I just gotta put the dies on the opposite sides that we normally run them. That'll work. Okay. It's just normally when we've been using this bead roller, we've been watching the bead go down. Now we're gonna watch the bead come up. Well, that's gonna be harder to keep centered. I better just mark this off. <laughs> Full circle. Okay, we got this side um, uh, marked out to uh, the best of our knowledge. So um, I think we're good no matter which side of the panel we're working on, we have our marks now. So um, let's get to English wheeling. I gotta pee. Okay, so um, we ran everything through the bead roller. Get this centered here. Um, there's a, a just a, a slight hump in all these. We're gonna do the little bead, so I don't I don't think we need to go crazy with it. At least I hope. Um, but we got 
We got the lines going across. I can feel the hump in those. I can feel the hump in these. Uh, I think there might be a little bit more of a hump over here um, than there is on these. I think I went a couple more times more over there, but I think we should be okay. Um, you know, this is just a piece of plywood here, so the plywood might not be very straight. But you can see we got a little distortion in the metal now, um, which is, it's what you want. You want to pre-distort it before you put it in the bead roller in hopes that the bead roller is going to make it straight again. So, um, it's kind of, you know, I'm kind of new at this stuff and it's just kind of testing and tuning, but um, a couple of things that I've done so far have come out really nice. So just kind of sticking with uh, what I've figured out so far and and now we're gonna roll with it. No pun intended. <laughs> so this is the first time that we're actually gonna have somewhat of a table here to, to use um, with this bead roller. Um, I have not used a bead roller that has a table yet, so this is a uh, uh, new experience. Okay, now uh, remember you're going to have to tell me where to stop on that end. We need to go, we need to go to this end first, and then we'll come back this way. Cut those ends. Well, how'd the beads come out? Uh, I think the beads came out pretty good. Um, now this will be the bottom because um, you, you know you don't want uh, you don't want these beads getting in the way of your metal going through. So those will be on the bottom. Um, beads in the way of the beads. So this is the top here. Um, I got to cut at each corner here, and then we'll put it. And uh, the box break, and and we'll put some brakes in it, um, and then that should be it. We're done after that. Other than uh, I, I gotta decide how I want to mount it to the table. It's gonna get welded to the to the stands to the frame there. Um, but whether I'm gonna drill some spot welds and do that and chance warp in it, or maybe just um, come up from underneath and put a couple tacks in there so it just stays in place thinking maybe that might be a better better plan so we got to decide um, which ones are we bending first Mm, you put it in wrong. Huh? It's upside down. Ah, that's what my problem is. I was like, why isn't there a head drop?
I guess this is why they make it so you can attach it on the other side, huh? Yeah, I was just thinking that as I was over here, I could have just moved the handle. Are you stuck in there now? Yes. So close. <laughs> Whee! Part right there. A little bit more. Sorry for the noisy air leaking out at the moment. My uh, regulator on the compressor started leaking. <laughs> Are you gonna switch it or leave it? Huh? The handle, are you going to switch it back? I guess so. Yeah, I just need to hold the metal there. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. What did you say? I just need to hold the metal there. I know, but then I picked the handle up to take the thing out. Okay, so on both sides, um, we kinked up a little bit, so I'm just going to hammer and dolly it. Alright, shall we go see how she, how she looks? sitting level down there. Um, you know, I think once I once I figure out how to how to tack it down in place, we'll be good to go. I think uh, I think that's a, a victory. Victory, victory. going through and and just putting some tacks um, on the inside of everything so I tacked in the corners where the bends got made 
so um, and it strengthened everything up um, I also added this plate here um, which is where it mounts uh, to the bead roller um, and I mounted I mounted that plate there uh, so that the two frames weren't loose from each other uh, now them being loose it, it made it uh, a lot easier to take on and off um, but with them being loose those those frames are pretty heavy I mean that's that's quarter inch thick steel um, so so that's pretty heavy I I didn't want them putting extra stress or or pulling on the tabletop um, it's just sheet metal uh, with that being loose I, not to say I'm gonna have this thing on and off a lot um, but the, you know this table is is pretty big I, I might get tired of bumping into it and end up removing the table and you know putting it in a corner until I'm ready to use it and if that's the case where where you know I'm getting tired of this thing you know being on there and bumping into it and having to walk around it um, you know I would be taking it on an awful lot and that's gonna put a lot of stress on those spot welds um, and, and it's either gonna break the spot welds or or it's gonna tear my tabletop so I didn't want to do that uh, so I put that plate on there to weld the two frames together so now there is no movement between the two there's no movement of anything with the bracket and the tape so um, but it did make it a little harder to take on and off um, not too bad I'm sure you'll get to see it in the video um, but the the lower bar that holds the die um, I have to take that bolt out uh, to uh, not anything to do with the bar the bolt is in the way of me sliding the table off um, so I gotta take that bolt out and then I can slide the table off forward so there was two bolts that held this table on um, now I have to remove three um, in order to take it off uh, what I'm probably gonna end up doing um, is I'm gonna countersink uh, the frame of the bead roller and I'm gonna get a countersunk like Allen key bolt that'll sit flush with the frame uh, that bolts that lower bar to the frame and then that way I can slide it on and off um, but I don't I don't have one of those bolts at the moment so until I get one I'm not gonna mess with it I'll just do the the three bolts to take it off it's not horrible it's just an extra extra step so but I got this ready to go back on I just wanna um, I'm gonna clean it up I'm gonna paint the bottom side the frame and the bottom side of the table just to prevent it from rusting uh, and then we're gonna clean up the top uh, and I'm gonna blow a couple coats of, of just some clear coat on it. Um, I really like the bare metal look. Uh, I just don't want it to rust. So, um, so yeah. So let's get to work on that and um, get to show you, like, so with the spot welds and and I made sure that all the spot welds were in the same places. So. I think it looks good. I like the looks of the spot weld coming through the bottom. Uh, it gives it more of a mechanical or industrial look. So I think it came out good. Good and tight and sturdy. It's heavy, heavy duty, well made. <clears throat> so I'm super, super happy with the way that it came out. I know it doesn't look like it's straight on this, it, it's the wooden table, because over there on the metal table it's nice and flat, so uh, it's just this wooden table that makes it look like it's out of shape, but I'm just gonna get uh, get all the, the magic marker off and any grease, any fingerprints, anything like that before I paint it.
Now, I don't have the exact blue um, that, I, that matches that. I thought about doing it black, but um, I, I really think it should be blue, even if it's not the correct color. Um, we'll get you know, close to it, I guess. Um, I'm gonna throw this down. I have, hopefully, um, so I have plenty of this stuff. It's kind of a, I don't know, a bluish, purplish, periwinkle color. I'm gonna put this down first. And then I have it's some blue that's closer, that's some engine paint um, that hopefully I can get um, a coat on where it matters um, that's a little closer to that. So This is just my Bully Dog Adhesion Promoter. Um, I use this stuff on everything. So technically being all bare metal, it should be scuffed and sanded and primed. Um, I'm really not interested in doing that. I really don't feel like doing it. Um, so hopefully this will work out just fine. Um, with just some, some rattle can. You know, it's nice, brand new, fresh metal. Um, you know, I cleaned it with lacquer thinner, so all the oils should be off of it. So hopefully it'll be okay with the adhesion promoter. You know, if not, it's just a, uh, it's just a table. You know, if it really bothers me later on down the road, I could always sandblast it and prime it and paint it. Um, I don't want to paint the, the top. I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of leery about even just putting a clear coat on there. Um, but being a flat matte clear coat, I think that will be okay. But when, when uh, I, I would think, you know, that you, you don't want uh, you know, you want to be able to slide stuff across the top of this table with ease. You don't want anything causing any drag or or catching, um, you know, the piece of metal uh, as you're pushing it through. If it's slowing it down, it's wanting to pull it one way or the other. Um, and I don't think that that's a good thing. Uh, I think you should be able to slide the piece of metal across there with ease. Um, so I don't want to paint the top. Um, you know, with some rattle can paint that always has kind of a, you know, scurry with your finger as you run across your finger with it because, you know, if your finger's doing that, the metal's gonna do the same thing. So, um, so I really don't want to clear it, but I don't want it to rust. And I think the flat mat clear is the best option. So, but, uh, I'm not gonna bore you with conversation. Uh, this adhesion promoter needs to sit for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, so I'll um, check back with you guys in a few minutes. Okay, uh, we're back. I think this is set on the ground. So I'm just gonna blow a coat or two of this, and then I have a color that I think is a little closer. I would say it's more the color of the welder than it is the stand. Um, but it's down underneath. I mean, nobody's really going to see it. I did put a couple pieces of tape uh, in between where it slides onto that frame. Um, it's already a tight fit, um, which I wanted a tight fit, that's good. 
but I don't want it too tight in there to where I can't get it on and off, so I taped it off. Fans gonna get some movement in here. Anybody that knows anything about paint, it's a cold rainy day outside. Paint don't like to dry in that weather, so get a little air movement in here at all. Help. Because I am impatient. Once I get the color on here, I'll end up flipping it over and doing the other side while it's still wet. So. I really don't have much of this. I'm hoping that I can maybe just get the, the frame of this because that's the only thing you really see when you walk in it is just uh, this frame section that hangs down from the page. If I can get a coat of this on there. Okay, get ready to blow uh, some clear coat on here, and this is just matte clear. Uh, it's Rust-Oleum Custom Automotive Flat Matte Clear. Um, this stuff, I buy this stuff by the case. Uh, I like putting it on uh, all types of different stuff. Some of the stuff that a lot of my tools around here I do in like a semi-gloss black or a flat black, uh, and if I don't have it. Uh, you know, I, I buy a gloss black by the case and I buy this flat mat by the case. Um, so, I have, uh, you know, if I do it in, in gloss black and I want a flat black, I just blow a coat or two of this over it and it matches all the rest of my tool. Um, I had originally bought this stuff uh, for a car I did last year uh, that had a rag top on it and all the trim was the same color as the car, um, but we didn't want it gloss. We wanted it to match the rag top that was on it, which is more of a flat. So I painted it the color of the car to match the car, and then I did this over the top of it, and it matched the top, but it matched the car. So, um, and ever since then, I just, I like this stuff. It sprays on nice too. As you can see, we got the table on. Um, it's it's good. It's sturdy. Um, don't don't mind the wobble in the whole unit itself. Um, I have not finished bolting it down. It only has two bolts in it. Um, I need to put a couple more in. But this thing is, I mean, it's good and stuff. So it moves the whole unit. Uh, so I think it came out good. Uh, if I was to do it again, um, I would take. The whole thing apart and I would take this frame off uh, and the first two plates I made that I drilled with the drill press 
I would have drilled all three of them together so that all three holes match from each plate that got mounted on each side and the frame. And I would not attempt to um, tap it. Uh, I would have just drilled uh, a hole going all the way through. It is nice having uh, that one tapped where I don't have to mess with the nut and a bolt. I can just screw it in. Um, it is nice, uh, but for the hassle that I went through um, trying to do that, uh, I don't think it was worth worth my time. Um, so if I was to do it again, I'd just drill a hole all the way through and nut and bolt. So, but other than that, I, I'm super happy with the way that it came out. Um, you know, for, for just making it, you know, I wouldn't say out of scrap metal, but it was all metal that I had around here. I wouldn't say that this table was free, um, but it was metal that I had in shop. Uh, I didn't have to go out and purchase anything to build it. So, um, and I had said earlier in making the video that when it was all done that, um, you know, I would show it kind of being in use. So, um, what I did was I just uh, took another piece of scrap metal that I had laying around uh, and I traced it out and marked it out. Um, I copied a license plate. Uh, so license plate has a little bent edge that goes around it um, and then some holes drilled in it. Of course, I can't do the holes on this, but I can do the little bent edge going around here. Um, and then, you know, maybe one day I'll, uh, you know, throw a nice paint job on it and, you know, maybe we'll uh, have a sticker made or something that says half dozen customs or maybe I'll paint it and have it say half dozen customs, but um, You know or it'll go back in the scrap pile. I just figured that uh, You know, I could show you guys um, You know the table in use so um, <clears throat> Now I gotta think just trying to think uh, if my die, my dies are going the right direction they are as long as I keep it on the inside if I go this way I'm going the wrong direction I think I want to switch my dies around ah <sighs> uno momento And I will get this thing mounted down properly to the floor. Um, I had it, what did I do with my young key now? Um, I did have it, um, you know, bolted down with two bolts and, and it's been fine. Um, but I've been using it a lot lately. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's just kind of, Kind of starting to wear itself in and it, it got a little wobbly, so... Um, not a huge deal. Uh, when I when I originally bolted it down to the floor, I, I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to mount it, so I didn't want to fully mount it um, down to the floor. Um, but as of right now, I, I kind of... I like where it's at, so... I just need to finish bolting it down to the floor. It was kind of a, a temporary thing. And now I think it's time to make it permanent.
So I did put this table on off camera. Um, but it it didn't take much to, to put it on. It just took me took me a few minutes. It took me longer to tighten the bolts than it did for me to put it on, so uh, it wasn't too bad. So uh, here we go. I'm just gonna try and um, just put this little crimp edge around here. Uh, I'm not doing any pre-stretching on this guy, so um, who knows if it'll come out straight or not. Okay, so that's it. Came out pretty nice. Um, we have a little license plate to hang up now. Just poke a couple holes in it, do a design on it. Um, so, you know, I think the table worked nice being able to, um, you know, have it staying level on the table. And, you know, as you can see, this thing actually came out um, nice and straight without even running it through the bead roller. And I think, excuse me, I think a lot of that has to do with being able to keep this metal panel uh, level. So, and you know, that was the whole purpose of it. The, the couple of times that I've used this thing, you know, I'm, I'm really focused on following my lines and paying attention to that. And I'm not paying attention to um, you know where the metals at and and then I catch it in the metals like this hanging off the edge of the bead roller um, and, and not that it's ruined anything that I've done yet by that but um, you know I, I think uh, it, you know they'll, they'll just come out better I'm, I'm trying to you know perfect this art form and um, or at least get better at it uh, and I think that this table is a big help. So, um, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will uh, catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.